In this video, I'm going to show you how to restore online functionality to more PS2 games within PCSX2. Alright everybody, so this video is going to focus on restoring online functionality to a good number of PS2 games, so you can play on fan servers with other players that enjoy the same games, set up community nights, what have you, but you could do this all from a real console or an emulation using PCSX2, and in this video I'm going to be focusing on the emulation side. So you're just going to need PCSX2 installed and set up, then you just got to follow some steps in this video and you'll be up and running with online gaming. Let's dive in. So in this video, I am referencing ps2online.com for a number of uh, different games. They'll all use the same DNS that we'll put in, but we'll go over that in more detail in a bit. But you can see just from this list alone, there are a good number of PS2 games supported. And one of those games happens to be Star Wars Battlefront 2, so we're going to use that as our first test example on how to get your PS2 games up and running online through PCSX2. So step one, open up PCSX2 and go to the settings tab and open it up, go to network and HDD. And then just check mark the enabled box if it isn't already checked. And for Ethernet device type, make sure this is set to sockets. And then for Ethernet device, choose your internet connection uh, adapter. So if you're on Wi-Fi or Ethernet, choose that one. You can try auto, should work, but if it doesn't, just manually select one. So for me, I chose Ethernet 2 because my adapter reset and renamed itself to Ethernet 2, so there it is. Yay. And for my first example, like I was saying, I'm going to use Star Wars Battlefront 2, so I'm just going to get loaded into the game. And with the game loaded, I'm just going to choose the multiplayer option and choose the internet option. And then we just need to add a network configuration to access the ps2online.com servers. So we just press square to open up uh, Sony's built-in network configuration utility here. Select add setting. Choose your memory card slot that you want to save it in. I corrupted my network settings. That's great. Um, anyway. <laughs> just ignore that red one. I was uh, manually deleting some configuration files and I messed stuff up. So uh, you'll get a network configuration file being saved to memory card slot one. So select yes. Then just press right. Select your ethernet adapter. Not required for the use of PPPoE. IP address, leave this on auto. And now for DNS, scroll down to manual and select it. And now when you press right, you'll be asked to enter in a DNS server. And that is where we are going to enter in the ps2online.com DNS server address. So 45722897 is what we are going to enter in. It is right there. So back over on PCSX2, 45722897. It's quicker to go down for that one. And then 197 down again. There we go. So 4572281970. Perfect. Now I'll just press right again. It's going to do a connection test. Connection test successful. Nice. And then we can rename the setting anything we want. I'm just going to name mine PS2 Online. And there we go. And then from here, just press right one more time and press cross to save the settings. And then back on the network settings menu, just press circle to exit out, select quit, and you'll be returned back to, in my example here, Battlefront 2. Or not, or it'll just kick you out to the browser, that's fine, then you just restart the game manually. But now I could go back into the multiplayer menu, internet, I could select my PS2 online network configuration. And I am now connected to Battlefront 2 online. It's asking if I want to create an ID or anything. I'm just going to select no for this one. But now I can create a lobby or join one, set some internet options here. But just go ahead and search for the games here. And there we go. So we have Star Wars Battlefront. This is a glitching server that actually has some players in it. 
But that works for our purposes. We'll just join the glitching server real quick so you can see an example of some online gameplay. But there we go, Star Wars Battlefront 2 PS2 version being played online through a private server. Very nice, very cool. I mean, if you're interested in playing the PS2 version of this game online, like, that's neat. And a lot of PS2 online games use that built-in Sony network configuration tool for your um, internet settings. So, for example, if I were to load up Need for Speed Underground. But here we go, Need for Speed Underground, I'm going to select the Play Online option here. It sees my PS2 online network configuration, so I could just select that. And it connects up to the private servers for Need for Speed Underground. Now, for this one, you do need to um, create a fake account, so you can just make it whatever you want. So I just made myself one before I started recording this video, so that way I could just quickly load in here and show you that it does connect to the online servers. And then I can select a car. It's not ranked for that one. That's fine. But... Unfortunately, there are no players that are actively playing this game, so I can't show you a demonstration of, um, of, um, actual gameplay, unfortunately, but, I mean, this is the online menu, so if you could get a group together to play this game online with you, there you go. And now for an example of a game that has its own built-in network configuration settings. This is Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. Technically, this was the first PS2 online game that was available on the system. It came out before the network adapter, even. But if you go down to Network Play, you have to set up your network device. Would you like to do so now? Yes. So then you can set up your name. You select the hardware, so we're going to choose the Ethernet adapter for PS2. Then Connection Settings. So we're going to leave auto detect there. Okay, everything in there is done. We need to go to advanced options. Use defaults? No, we want to set up our DNS server. So, unfortunately, this one's a little jank. We just got to delete all of that. And then we put in our IP address for ps2online.com. So 45.7.228. No, not zero. One, nine, seven. There we go. And then just accept the changes. Select done. Save settings. Save successful. Done. Network play. Testing network settings. And then you can choose between an internet or a LAN game, so I'm just going to choose internet. Welcome to Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3 PS2Online.com. There we go. So unfortunately, no one's playing this one again either, but this is what it looks like when you get into the uh, network menu. And then you can start your own server, choose your game types. Don't have any other levels unlocked right now. Player count. And there we go. But we're in uh, free skate mode right now since there's no other players that are available to play the game with me. But there we go. Like, we are, we are hosting the game. And with that, we have covered the basics of getting your PS2 games back online using ps2online.com's DNS server. So if you access ps2online.com's spreadsheet of playable games, you can see that a lot of PS2 games are back online with all their fu online functionality restored. There is a good amount that still do not work in the here and now, unfortunately, but I mean, that's not a bad list to work with that we've got. But you can access this uh, spreadsheet, there'll be a link in the description below, and you can see if your games work. Now... If you go to a game, for example, we could go back down to um, Star Wars Battlefront 2 here. So, Star Wars Battlefront 2. You can see that, yes, it does have online. And you'll see that the field here is green. That means you don't have to do any extra things to get this game up and running. If you see a game that is yellow, 
So, for example, let's find Metal Gear Solid 3. All right, Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence. Yes, it is online, but look, it, it has a yellow box here. That means you have to do some extra steps to get that game back online. You can also see which DNS address you need to use to get online. So any of them that say Christian use the ps2online.com's DNS server, which is a good majority of them. So if you need to do a separate DNS number for a different game, you could click on DS numbers here, DNS numbers here, and you'll see all the different DNS numbers. And this is a very handy tool. But anyway, back to what I was saying. So a lot of the, all the games I've shown so far don't need anything special to get them up and running. They just run right out of the gate just by putting in the alternate DNS. And that's how a lot of these games will run. But some games require a couple of extra steps. So I'm going to be using Metal Gear Solid 3 as an example here. So Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence had Metal Gear Online. It can use the Christian uh, DNS server so we don't have to do any other extra setup there. But if I scroll my uh, spreadsheet over here, you'll see this section up here called D DNAS info, DNAS info. And so under Metal Gear Solid 3, you'll see that there is a cheat code for a custom bypass code or a custom code for DNAS. But this code is only for actual PS2 consoles. They don't have one for the emulator, so they have a column for PCSX2 and a column for real consoles. So if the game you're trying to get online needs a DNAS bypass code and you already have a PCSX2 cheat file, you can just download that, put it in your PCSX2 cheat folder, and it's all good to go. I'm choosing Metal Gear Online specifically because it only has a code for real consoles. So I'm going to download this real quick. And now I just need to convert that to a PCSX2 PNAC, PNAC however you want to pronounce it, file to be used in PCSX2. And thanks to vSub, we do have a tool that will allow us to convert these codes over to work with PCSX2. So, I will have a link to this PCSX2 forum post in the description below. But just scroll down, and then download the latest version. As of this video, it's multi-converter version 2.3. So now that I have both of these files downloaded, I'm just going to get them extracted. All right. So if I open up my Metal Gear Solid folder, you'll see that it is a .cht file. This is so you can use it in open PS2 loader on actual consoles. So we'll just pull this over here for a second. We'll open that in a minute. Now I'm going to open the multi-converter folder and launch multi-converter.exe. Then it's going to ask us to choose a PCSX2 folder. So just go ahead and select your PCSX2 folder. So mine's on the desktop here. There we go. And after you go through that quick initial setup right there, I'm going to drag my Metal Gear Solid 3 subsistence codes into the program here. So it'll say place raw codes here. There we go. And once you have that place, just highlight the title of the game up at the top if it has it. And then you can just copy that, put that in the game title field here. And then we need the game CRC code. So open back up your PCSX2 menu here. Right click on the game that you're trying to make codes for. And under the summary tab, you will see the CRC code. So just select that, copy it, and then paste that into the CRC of the multi-converter. And then just click the to pnatch file there. And we now have a cheat file ready to go for PCSX2. So then we could just click on save. And since you already selected your PCSX2 folder, it's going to have the cheats folder open already. And you already have the CRC set, so it's good to go. Just click on save. And then just close out of that. And then for Metal Gear Solid 3, I already have the properties menu open here, which is great. So emulation tab, and I'm going to enable cheats. So that way it will use that DNAS uh, bypass code file that I just created. So close out of that. And now I could test to make sure that everything is working as intended. All right, so Metal Gear Solid 3 Subsistence Disc 2, online mode. And then you have the option to choose first time or play using detailed settings. You can choose either one. I personally go to using detailed settings, connect network, agree. I'm gonna choose my PS2 online network setting. 
And if that cheat code is working correctly, we'll get by the DNAS uh, screen there, which we did. Awesome. Cannot create game in current network environment. That's fine. But as you can see, we are connected to the Metal Gear Online uh, savemgo.com server. So you can read through uh, the custom server rules here. Click agree or disagree. And then you need to input your account, uh, username and password. So if you haven't created one, go to choose from account list, choose a new account and uh, create one. I've already made one, so I'm just gonna input my stuff. And I'm gonna save my account to the account list so I don't have to enter that stuff anymore. I'm gonna save the game settings. And it connects me to the online library and Look at that, there's actually people playing Metal Gear Online right now. Cool. So I'm just gonna... Just gonna click on Join Game. Looks like it's a Latin American server, so this is gonna be a bit laggy, but whatever. But we could go ahead and join in on the game. But there we go, and this uh, cheat file that I input actually has a widescreen patch enabled by default that I forgot to turn off. That's all right. We can just go in and uh, change the aspect ratio to widescreen real quick. So that way everything doesn't look all weird. But there we go. Metal Gear Online in an actual online server. Like, that's freaking awesome. But using the PS2 online games list, you can basically get all the supported PS2 games up and running. Some might require the DNAS bypass codes. Some might be a little bit more involved like SOCOM 2, which I have a separate video for. Or something like dot .hack um, slash slash fragment, or you can uh, check out a GitHub page to find more information about how to do it. But for any of the ones that are in yellow, they usually have online game info that you can read here and uh, see what exactly needs to be done to get that game up and running. And then, of course, the patches are right here. And then, again, anything that is just in green right from the beginning, you don't really need to do anything with other than put in the proper DNS number. So this spreadsheet, very handy, and again, will be linked in the description below. But that's going to do it for this video. Thank you so much, as always, for watching, and I hope you have a good time playing your PS2 games online on fan servers with a dedicated PS2 community. But here at the end of the video, I do have a couple of favors to ask. If you haven't done so already, please be sure to hit that thumbs up, thumbs down button, just depending on how much you like this tutorial. And also hit that sub button and notification bell so you can see when new videos go live on the channel. I have loads of content coming your way and I'd love to have each and every one of you along for the ride. For anyone interested in further helping support the channel, you can also check out that join button here on YouTube or the Patreon link in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. A little goes a long way to keeping this place up and running and bringing this content to all of you. Big shout out to all of our current backers, thank you so much for believing what we do here and helping us keep it going. But until next time, my wonderful internet peeps, you all stay awesome, keep on gaming, and we'll see you back next video.